Welcome back, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. I super appreciate it. This week, we're going to finally be looking at my favorite video game franchise of all time, The Legend of Zelda series. Legend of Zelda, I just love. I think all the games have something special and unique to offer in each of the games. Although I wouldn't actually get into this game series till 1998's Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This series is the best series and it's so near and dear to my heart. But the first game I did actually try was the original Legend of Zelda, the one we're going to be looking at today. I want to look as many Zelda games as possible for Zelda's 35th anniversary. So without further ado, let's give a look to where it all started, The Legend of Zelda on the NES. Is it good or is it still archaic? It's still archaic, but let's see how good it is. <laughs> Well, looking at the development history for The Legend of Zelda, the very concept of the game really started two years prior in 1984. Just a year after the release of the Famicom, Shigeru Miyamoto wanted to create more of a less linear adventure, unlike the best-selling Super Mario Bros. And the team worked on Super Mario Bros. would work on this game and come up with ideas for this game. In a Super Play Magazine interview with Miyamoto, he would go on to say, As with the Mario series, I came up with the concept for The Legend of Zelda series from my adventures as a child exploring the wide variety of places around my home. They wanted to make a real-time adventure game with plenty of caves and things to explore. And they do claim, however, the game was very much made with mistakes, like the map for instance, which they did not like. Nor do I. And some of the dungeons like level 7 were changed with their color scheme. Koji Kondo had also had some issues for the music, intending on using the piece Bolero for the opening title screen, but the team could not get the copyright for it in that time. Thus, the best theme of all of gaming, at least in my eyes anyway, was born. And then The Legend of Zelda was finished. Story-wise, this game is an NES title, so there isn't too much to look at. In the land of Hyrule, once peaceful land, now under the terror of a man named Ganon, who took the Triforce of power and is hidden away, keeping control of the once thriving land of Hyrule. Zelda, the princess of Hyrule, has the second Triforce piece called the Triforce of Wisdom, and he has captured her now, and now it's up to the protagonist Link to save her from the Ganon's clutches, and save the entire world. Link saves the world with the credits rolling and ending the game. So really story-wise, The Legend of Zelda could honestly be explained the same way Super Mario Bros is. A princess is kidnapped, a hero must go save said princess, although in the show it seemed like Link was the one needing saving most of the time, but besides that, the point is an old archaic story that works for the time, but nowadays really doesn't honestly. Now gameplay-wise, it should be really good, right? I mean, all the rest of the stuff I mentioned is decent for an NES game, so the gameplay should be good, right? Right? Okay, starting off, let's get this right out of the way with your map. I hate it. Yes, yes, I know, I know. But Danny, the game came with a map. Well, I didn't have one, so I had to look it up on the internet. If that's what it takes for me to get to point to point, that's stupid. However, one design choice that I like with the map is that it is super small, so it does make it easier to find locations of where to go. Regardless of this design choice, I have no idea what they were thinking about making this map so bad. Next, going into the control. I'm not sure what the deal was with the switch, but sometimes it would move up and it would go down or vice versa. Also, the fact that you can only go four directions, one gentle touch can send you up or down, but jeez man, what is wrong with this game? However, regardless of what I think of the crappy control scheme and the crappy map, I do think this is a great game. I did fail to mention that I am playing a special version on my Switch, which gives you a ton with the game. I wanted to play this version because one, it has save states, and two, I wanted to experience the ending of this game. And I have to say, with some of the items are awesome. I love blowing stuff up with bombs, wrecking havoc with my sword, and the final sword, I mean. And just having all that power in a game like this is so satisfying. It's like, yeah man, look out Ganondorf. <laughs> The bow is really kind of weak in this game. Like, yeah, it takes out the final boss, so that's cool, but it really lacks what it could kill with, though. Although, taking out Goma with it is a complete joke as well. Other than that, color me not impressed, but the other weapons I like. The magic rod is slick and takes out a ton of enemies from a distance which in my opinion makes for way more interesting combat. You cannot take out the magic dealing enemies with it, but that is a given. There are other items that can really help you out, and they also help to keep Link alive during the adventure, such as the mails, the raft, to get you to other dungeons, the ladder, which takes you to places you cannot normally get before, 
And speaking of dungeons, the dungeons in this game are really good. They're really well designed and some are suckily designed. With really one dungeon like that and it really pisses me off. This dungeon, you have to have a specific amount of bombs to get to the next room to fight blue dark nuts at the end of this, and then you get a flute to finally be able to take on the boss. It is kind of stupid, and I feel like later dungeons are harder in this game, but really don't suck the fun away like this dungeon. My favorite dungeon is Dungeon 7. When you become that powerful with the sword, the difficulty is so much more easier to handle. I freaking love it so much. The bosses come at the end of the dungeons, but honestly have really, really schizophrenic difficulty. Like the first four bosses are in perfect order, and then when you get to six, the boss goes down in one hit. The next one going down in two hits, and the final boss is super easy. You stand there, you swing your sword, you use an arrow, and then boom, you're done. But I do love the design of these bosses. They do look big, and they do look threatening. And to be honest, with the graphics in this game, it really kind of does make them stand out in an NES library. It's quite amazing, actually. But this game, in my opinion, always looked kind of ugly to me, but after playing through this game, I could appreciate just what the job they did with this game. And they made it look really good. And even though Koji Kondo said he had some issues making the music for this game, I think the soundtrack in this game is actually excellent. The overworld theme, the intro theme, will get you jacked for this game. And the sweet, sweet final dungeon theme is just all the excellent. The sounds are great as well. I love killing enemies in this game. They are so satisfying to kill with how glorious the sound is. I don't think that enemies are too crazy in this game. However, one thing I hate are the dark nuts and the wizards. Holy cow, I died and wasted so much time on these fetchers, man. All in all, for an NES game, it's actually a really good game. The Legend of Zelda is a really great game. I think it is one of the best games in the NES library. I do have the issues with the controls and the map and just a couple of other things aside of that, making this a really solid title. But I don't think it's the best NES game or the best Zelda game. And here's my thoughts on what I think people should say to somebody who thinks that Legend of Zelda should be above your favorite Zelda game. I think Zelda 1 is a great game, but my issue is for people who want to play The Legend of Zelda and who love this game in the series and realize that just because it's your favorite game, you don't need to mock people for having an opinion about Zelda that is different than yours. It's like, okay guys, I love Ocarina of Time and I love Zelda 1, just not as much as Ocarina of Time. Don't take it like I just flicked your firstborn child in the head, that's very childish. But with that being said, this is a great game. I love the graphics and music. And even if you don't have a Switch or an NES or anything like that, give this game a shot. I was really surprised at how much I loved it and how satisfied I actually was with the ending. My only real complaints are the controls. They kind of suck and the map really blows. And it kind of defeats the purpose that the developers say the map sucks too. But all in all, this is a solid NES title and I enjoyed playing it for the most part. Stay tuned for next week as I tackle Zelda 2. Thanks for watching.